Here's the question. Is salt good or bad? Most health experts, you know, have been teaching for years that salt is bad, that if you consume too much salt, it's going to increase your blood pressure, right? It's going to increase the amount of fluid. It's not going to allow you to burn fat effectively. You're going to have swelling, uh, edema, different issues like that. However, what we have to understand is the dynamic between salt and insulin. We know that when your body's insulin resistant, you're producing a lot of insulin, that causes you to retain sodium. When you retain sodium, you retain water. And when you retain sodium and water, that's gonna increase the amount of pressure in your blood vessels, causing high blood pressure, could cause edema, could cause a lot of stress on your cells. Now, is the problem related to the salt or is it related to the insulin? Well, the, the problem is actually the insulin, not the salt. So when you lower insulin, like for example, if you're doing intermittent fasting, if you're following a lower carbohydrate diet, if you're exercising regularly, if you're doing those types of things, then you're gonna be insulin sensitive, your body's gonna produce less insulin. In a lower insulin environment, your body excretes more sodium. You actually need to replace sodium because it's a critical electrolyte. You know, most of your sweat is made up of sodium. Sodium's critical for good blood flow dynamics, meaning that if you don't have enough sodium, you're not gonna have enough blood pressure to get red blood cells carrying oxygen into the cells of your body. You need that oxygen to produce cellular energy, to pull wastes and toxins out. So if you don't have enough sodium, you're gonna to tend to be more lightheaded. You're gonna have lower energy. You're gonna have more fatigue. You're gonna have more brain fog. You're not gonna feel as good. You're gonna be more irritable and you're gonna struggle in your day-to-day -day life. And so super critical that we do two things. Number one, do what it takes to get insulin down, right? So we wanna have optimal insulin levels. If I'm testing your fasting insulin on, on blood work, I like to see it somewhere between one and maybe up to six. One in five usually, one in six. Okay, if it's up above that, it's a sign that you're insulin resistant, okay? And it can, it can go all the way up. I've seen people 25, 30, right? Really high doses of insulin that their body is pumping out. And for those individuals, until we get the insulin down, we don't wanna consume much sodium. We wanna somewhat reduce our exposure. But what, the way that we get the insulin down is through things like intermittent fasting, nutrition changes, getting rid of processed carbohydrates and sugars, refined oils, all the different tips and strategies that I talk about all the time on my channel. And then we need to add back the sodium. In fact, when you start to do intermittent fasting, if you don't have enough salt, good quality salt, then you're actually gonna feel fatigued. You're gonna feel lightheaded. You're not gonna feel very good. In fact, there's a condition called the keto flu where people feel really awful like they have the flu when their body gets into ketosis or when they're at least trying, attempting to get into ketosis. And this is because they typically are electrolyte deficient. So salt is very, very good and very necessary for your body. I recommend salting foods up to your taste, right? You don't have to, you don't have to go above and beyond and, and over salt things, but salt things up to your, your taste. Also, you can get good salts from some natural things like celery, dark green leafy vegetables, sea vegetables like dulce and kelp and, and different things like that, wild caught fish, grass fed meat, pasture raised eggs, all really good natural sources of sodium as well. One thing though I, I, I do recommend is typical table salt. I'm not a fan of that. There's a lot of different toxins in them. Most sea salts actually have, in fact, there was a study that showed that 90% of the sea salts on the market actually are contaminated with microplastics. And that's because we have so much plastic in our ocean and our, our, our waterways. And so many of them are contaminated. So I like to get the kind of salt that my family and I use is salt that comes from deep in the earth. It's volcanic salts. There's Himalayan pink salt, for example, which is great. And my favorite is Redmond's real salt it comes from Utah deep in the ground, this is not contaminated with these microplastics and it works really, really good. Tons and tons, 84 trace minerals here um, and it works fantastic. So I just gently salt my foods to taste, to flavor using this uh, Redmond's Real Salt. From time to time, if I'm feeling like I have a little bit, like I, like I just don't have enough energy or if I have brain fog, really all I'll do is take like a tiny, tiny bit of salt on my finger, put it on my tongue. Sometimes I'll drink water with it but even if you just put it on your tongue, you'll notice, wow, your energy picks up. And that's because again, these electrolytes like sodium, which is the main electrolyte, so critical 
for energy production, but there's also 84 trace minerals in there that really helps support your body as a whole. So is salt good or bad? Really depends on your insulin sensitivity, but salt is actually very good if your body's healthy and you're insulin sensitive. If you're not insulin sensitive, do what it takes to get insulin sensitive today so you can really thrive. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that now and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video so you never miss one of these important trainings. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for being a part of our community and we'll see you guys in a future video.